two, one, and we are live. And by live, I mean we're pre-recording this so we can edit it down should we make any mistakes, which of course we're not going to do today because we're just joined with the fantastic team from Scale Fusion. What is Scale Fusion? Why is it important? How is it going to change your life? We're going to talk about all those things. But first, a round of introductions. Uh, Stephen Gole and Amit uh, Ponam, we're going to do an introduction. I work with these gentlemen, but you guys might uh, not know who they are. So without further ado, uh, Steve, go to you first, and then Amit will do a round of introductions and then get right into the episode. Uh, Stephen, over to you, sir. Sure thing. Uh, my name is Steve Goal. I'm Director of Strategic Partnerships for Scale Fusion for North America. So my role is uh, all things partnerships, all things channels, uh, everything to basically tell the Scale Fusion story for North America. Awesome. Thank you very much. Amit, sir, over to you. Okay, thank you. Uh, so I'm Amit Ponam. Uh, I'm with Scale Fusion for over seven years, and I'm the sales director. So I look after uh, North America from the strategy perspective. So everything direct or indirect, uh, I take care of that. And that's it. Okay, that was great. That's perfect. Uh, favorite flavor of ice cream? What is it? For me, vanilla. Like it's, I, I guess maybe it's a cliche, but yeah. Vanilla okay. works for me. <laughs> no, all right, there it Why? is. Why? Well, what would you ask that? We're just trying to get to know you. Just trying to keep this thing light. <laughs> Steve, what about you? Favorite flavor of ice cream? There are uh, answers. Yeah, there's there's a couple, but I have to claim, because nobody else is going to know this unless you're from Michigan, probably. So Superman, I mean, Superman ice cream is a thing. It's like a Michigan Superman. thing. So I'm going to okay, go Superman. I don't know what that is. So, See? All right, Superman it is. That's on me. I'm not a Michigander, <laughs> uh, but we'll figure it out. I am in Michigan right now, a little bit of a different setup. So, Mamada, this is a thing I'm going to do later today. I'm going to try to find uh, Superman flavored ice cream. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but yeah. I hope it's Never delicious. told me that. You know, there you go. That. I, I was I'm, there. I'm, yeah. I may be setting you guys up. It may be a great prank. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I will find out uh, in about two hours. Uh, all right. So let's get into it. Scale Fusion. Uh, why is it important? How are you guys doing uh, MDM differently? I think that's a, a, a probably a great question because uh, I think a lot of times people think MDM, they kind of go, ah, everyone's got an MDM, whatever. It's just an MDM is an MDM is an MDM. And you've, you've been very uh, different in your thinking and application for a couple key things, the support, the engineering of it, uh, and then the overall cost. So I think I probably want to talk about those three things maybe to start, and then we can launch from there. Is that a, is that a fair place to start for you guys? Yeah, I think, yeah, that's the best place to start with, right? Uh, so I can possibly take that question. And yeah, please. More, more about it. So, yeah, uh, the very first point is uh, that it's not over-engineered, right? Because a lot of software that we see today is trying to go ahead and beat the competition and trying to go ahead and have all the features which the competition might have. Uh, but since inception, uh, our founders have always believed in building what people will use. And we always build some features based on requirements, right? Like mm. somebody comes to us saying that, hey, you know what? Like, I would like, I like your software. And if you can make this for us, that would be really great. Now, if it fits our roadmap, fantastic. We will go ahead and build it, right? And even if it's not part of a roadmap, but solves customer problem, okay, let's see how we can solve it. Hmm. So uh, that's what has been helped us a lot and uh, not making it, it like feature-centric, but more towards to the features which our users are going to use every day in and out. I think 95% or 96% of times, like whatever features we have, they are being used. So, so that's good to see that whatever we build is actually been used. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the points, right? And now uh, the other key thing is like, though everyone wants to make it easy to use software, right? And even, even uh, Scale Fusion is easy to use MDM. However, but still some people need some help, right? And uh, nowadays with uh, the current things, like support is crazy, right? People have to wait in queues or they're talking to bots and so on. One thing that we have been doing differently. The bot thing? Sorry, just yeah. real quick. The bot thing? Can we stop with the bot thing? That is like just an instant exactly. blood boil. I think it's worse than a dot and just waiting <laughs> for someone to pick up to bad, like whatever music. It's it's because you know you're not talking to anybody and you, you and you know it's going to, you just, you're going to have to fail through this thing like probably for 10 minutes before you can get to a person. It's so annoying. Sorry to interrupt you, but the bot no. thing, we. I, I guess we all we, we all know the pain, right? Like so that's exactly what we want to do differently. So we don't have bot, right? The max bot we will have over there is after a human talking to you saying that hey, if you want when I'm looking for you for this, there's a help doc. 
it's not a bot, but it's a link for they can self-explore until we go ahead and get something for them. But mm. our average industry reply, I mean, industry, I don't know really, but for, for scale fusion, uh, we have this track record of replying to customers within two minutes. Now, not resolution time, but replying at least, coming back to them saying that, hey, we are here and we're going to help you. And I think that helps a lot because uh, that gives you that peace of mind that, hey, you know, I'm not going to be stuck around and not going to get my answers. Mm. But somebody telling you, like giving you assurance, I'm going to be with you. We take that. And second response for us is close to four minutes or something like that. And average resolution time is within two hours. Now, that's, that's how it has been different, right? And that is one of our major, major differentiators. And uh, coming at the price, I do not call ourselves as uh, uh, some low-cost MDM or something. I, I think that we charge, uh, we, we would say the value for money type of MDM. So uh, you pay actually for something what you really need to use. Uh, mm -hmm. Coming back to the first point of not over-engineered is because we don't want to create like so many features that people are not going to possibly use and then they are paying for it. Right. So that's why we say uh, that the price also, that, that makes us go ahead and make the plans based on the requirement of the customer. So we have different yeah. plans meeting the business requirement and the enterprise requirement. Not everyone needs integration or crazy uh, APIs right. and so on, right? So a, a medium, small and medium businesses maybe just need a business plan and they have that. And for enterprises, you can go to something else. But this, these are the three uh, things that uh, I would say is like, which has been working differently for us. There is some more aspects to it, but we can go on. But these are the three sure. things that I think uh, we've been doing it very, very well. Yeah, absolutely. And I so, and it's funny too because you talked about the, uh, the like the the amount of things that most MDMs can do. You look at some of the larger larger guys; it's like they're chasing after each other's checklists for <laughs> a, a fragment of the businesses that are probably actually going to use it. It's like probably a, maybe a percent of a percent. Um, for how most typical organizations are going to use them. And they're so uh, heavily over-engineered, the costs do skyrocket pretty significantly yes. to a place now where it's like, like you really kind of scratch your head. It's like, oh, like, is this even worth doing it? And then on top of that, the support piece isn't included, which is wild to me because it's like, hey, I'm going to buy a product and then it's not going to work properly. And then it's on me to... <laughs> to give you more money, it's a, that's the Spirit Airlines model, right? You buy a seat, yeah. and if you want to put your bag over your head, you got to pay more. If you want water, if you want to get on the plane, I think they even charge you for that. Uh, but it's uh, yeah, it's a wild, uh, it's a strange business model where everything becomes a la carte, and the and the the end user really gets lost uh, in the support of that or the lack thereof. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the ease of use. From a setup perspective, I know we've got a couple working demos here uh, with Ambrose um, in the mobility center. Um, the kind of the agility of how quick quick that is. And then again, I just want to hit on the support because I think you guys have something really unique. Um, and actually, we talked to one of our partners in the identity space, BioKey. Uh, shout out to BioKey and Kimberly Biddings. Uh, but we talked to uh, BioKey, and this is one of the things that they did well um as as well where they realized that there was such a uh, a lack of support in the market they put a ton of resources into that and you guys have done very similar things where it's not a la carte and it really is impressive what you guys can do from a support mechanism so i just want to keep hammering on that throughout this this whole thing but maybe to start we can talk a little bit about ease of use because some of these things are so over engineered that they're not even easy to set up um, so can we talk a little bit about that? Because I think you can do a lot from a single pane of glass. And we keep hearing single pane of glass, but you guys really, it's pretty easy to set up from a single pane of glass. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and I cannot tell more about it because I, I'll take a, I'll give you a little bit of history behind it, why we say ease of use and why it is actually like that, mm -hmm. right? So 2013, uh, late 2013 is when we started. And uh, we did not have a channel outreach until 2019. So we were heavily inbound driven company. So whoever hits a website, right? They have this 14 days or 20 days trial. Now they have 15 days or 20 days to go ahead and try a software and then possibly buy us a, a subscription. Now uh, we managed to go ahead and have close to 5,500 customer until 2019 by just an inbound channel. Now that means somebody was able to go ahead and to log in 
enroll a device and then open the wallet to pay us overseas. We, we managed to have close to 90 countries until then. So mm. somebody was able to go ahead and pay for our software without even talking to us was itself a great gratification towards ease of use. And not only that, uh, what the numbers, I'm talking data, right? But uh, if you go around on Gartner Pure Insight or Captera or G2Crowd, people rave about Scale Fusion for their ease of use, right? Uh, how easy it is to go ahead and set up the dashboard and how easy it is set up to go ahead and enroll the device and go to market. Because everyone wants to go ahead and get the devices managed and go to a market faster and forget about it, right? You don't want to have a headache after that. They want to have an FDM, which they use, and then have a good night's sleep. That's what all IT guys want. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> who, who I mean, who doesn't enjoy doing their work two and three, four times in a row? <laughs> Re, or redoing it, I should say. <laughs> it's not, not fun for anybody. Exactly, right? So, uh, so that, that itself was some gratification from the data perspective and now customers talking about it. And uh, these are the two, one thing that everyone will talk about is easy to use. And you're talking about single pane of window, right? We, uh, mm. Yes, we, because they call it that, it's because uh, we have supporting all the major operating systems. Matter of fact, it's not live uh, on our website, yes, but we also have Linux. So been said that, like we support Android devices, we support iOS, Mac, Windows, uh, Linux is next, so Linux will be followed with a couple of other devices that we will be managing into that as well. So, yes, uh, maybe it was safe for this podcast. I don't know, like, but the launch just happened like three days back. <laughs> oh, that's uh, great! Yeah, we didn't even know we could do that. We can do that now. That's right? perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. So, so now that's why people like now you don't have to have multiple MDMs to manage different devices. Now you get to have bird's eye view on your entire inventory. On scale fusion we have a mm. deep dive wherein you know somebody logs in and a single page gives you all the information that you need to know about the devices the battery uh what is the health of the devices and so on all all the needy gritty and that can be customizable right so whatever the it guy wants to see he can go ahead and see it based on his requirement so that's how uh, i would say that uh, the ease of use that we rave about or our customers rave about is uh it is there because it's data driven because we were not talking to people. Of course, we were talking to them on phone and emails, but nobody actually saw us or met us, but still were buying subscription for us and paying us for year and year and year and year. So the, so that's extremely uh, what we at Scale Fusion are extremely proud about that ease of use. And we want to maintain that, right? And that's why yeah. we don't want to over-engineer it because yeah. we want to keep it simple. Uh, so, so anyone can come. Uh, like you don't need to have crazy certifications done uh, to start using the software, right? Anyone can join, take a training session from the team. And I think after one call, they're pretty much like, oh, I can do this on my own. Yeah, uh, that's, a, that's a good thing to hear. Yeah, and actually, I've uh, I talked to Ambrose about this. We went through uh, some of the training mechanism or some of the training software that you get or the, with the engineering team. So the training we set the stuff up. Uh, it is so easy; even my father could do it. That's and he's, <laughs> for those of you who know my father. He's um, let's say he's not a tech wizard, and that's an understatement. So <laughs> he's uh, should, it's a wonderful man. Let a, yeah, yeah, that should we should be a let good a test. Marketing, marketing guys talking to you. <laughs> Reed's father can do it. Yeah. Yeah, Reed's father can do it, and then it'll just be a video yeah. of him setting it up. It's like, oh my god, I really did this. It's yeah, it's really, it's quite simple. Uh, and actually, that might be—is uh, that one of the things that got you guys into some of the certifications that you've had and some of the recognition you've gotten? Of Gartner, I think you're the youngest um, yeah. within the quadrant. Correct. So yeah, we are the youngest and the fastest one to get over there, right? So Gartner has uh, a magic quadrant for mid-market MDM, UEM an EMM category and uh, we we fall into that magic quadrant and uh, they do have an enterprise segment but we hit very hard when it comes to small and medium businesses and that is where we made the big differences yes uh, we are uh, not only Gartner but even in G2 Crowd or Captera we are the market leaders over there as well and uh, yeah and everywhere the top three things right they always come up is uh, the ease of use and the uh, support and the price right mm -hmm. these are the three things which keeps revolving everywhere and uh, so ease of use and support can go up and down sometimes but they're always there yeah and i think um again just to, i want to just to 
hammer on the support piece of this because it's it's so incredibly important. And it's like uh, it's a strange thing. Like we get a lot of uh, people that want to work with us because they'll send they'll, they'll send us an email and they're like, "Yeah, you guys respond same day." Like I can't believe that's a competitive advantage in 2022. Uh, but that's actually a thing now. It's like, yeah, you answer your emails and you pick up your phone. Who knew that would ever be a thing that would make you stand out amongst other people in the workforce? Yeah. But it's a real thing. And the same, the reason I bring that up, it's like, who knew just supporting your customers would be like a competitive advantage? Like, oh, you guys support your customers? That seems kind of strange. Uh, but I did want to talk about that from the customer journey perspective. You guys don't charge extra for the support. And I think I no. mentioned that. I might have I might have accidentally mentioned that at the top. I was trying to hold out to mention this until mm-hmm. later. But you guys don't charge extra for this which is, again, yeah. phenomenal. So it's not just about, yeah. like, hey, we support our customers. It's really like you putting your money where your mouth is, literally in this case, or rather not putting money where your mouth is because you're not taking any money. So you talk a little yeah. bit about, like, how is it possible that you're able to support the customer uh, without, like, your typical tiered support you see, professional services, you roll something out, and there's, you know, a gazillion different SKUs out there for supporting a customer through the life cycle of their deployment versus actually just including it, especially at the price yeah. point that you guys are in. Correct. I okay. Can, so, I can go ahead and take that if you want, Amit, or I'll yeah, take a stab yeah, at it anyway. I mean, yeah, it's, please, it's please. exactly what you said, Reed. It's like this shocking thing in the market. Oh my gosh, you're going to sell me a product and you're going to support it and you're not going to charge me extra for it. And like people's minds are blown. So, I mean, it's, uh, we get the response all the time, but just to kind of walk through that customer journey too is, it's it starts before you purchase even. So if you have interest in checking out Scale Fusion, you think it might be the right uh, solution for what you're trying to solve. We get on the call, you know, pre-sales and walk through that with you, with the customer, and say, okay, what are you trying to do? It kind of show and tell. Here's how it works, and uh, go step by step through the screens to say this is this is what we do in your situation. Do you have questions on it? What type of devices are you doing? What's your time frame? You know, um, all of those things that um, are completely different than, you know, some people will do that on the pre-sale side, but then you go ahead and sell it and then, hey, you're on your own or, you know, ask us uh, help for help. We're going to charge you. It's not the case. And I think it actually all ties together to what we were talking about earlier. And it's not an over-engineered product, but I would say it's an elegantly engineered product in that it's easy to use once you know how to use it especially so if somebody that uh may be it centric a little bit or um is familiar you know with other mdms they're just going to get in there and just get they're going to know how to use it it's going to be easy and intuitive we get customers all across the board though somebody that maybe never used an mdm before that wants us to you know help support them in you know building those first profiles or figuring out how to enroll the devices and then we'll walk through that with them um so it, it comes all the way from the beginning of when you're just thinking about purchasing it through to you know onboarding uh that onboarding that customer and then you know if things change in their environment six months 12 months down the road and they've got questions we're always there to help and it doesn't you know they don't have to charge it they don't have to pay anything yeah. extra to get that support from us yeah and yeah. Uh, just to add to what Steve yeah, was saying, right? Like, uh, so uh, that exactly the differentiator is like, we know the software works. We know that if someone is coming to us for one time, they're not going to come back again and again. So that's, that's, that's the faith. And that's the, we know that very well that our software works. It just works. So we know if we do the handholding, maybe it's for one time, but that's an investment. Because if you invest your time right with your customer, educating, educating them correctly about how it can be used, what mm. it can be, what it can do, and what potentially it can do, then it becomes easier for your next call. Because if you just answer like A for Apple and then let it go, job not done, right? Like if you if they are there, take make an effort to go ahead and ask them like, hey, what do you do, right? Do you want to have any other questions to be answered? or if there's something that could have been done on a previous call. So like how Steve said, it goes even before they come to you. So our pre-sales guys are actually, or the account manager, pre-sales guys, call them whatever you want to. But these guys are doing the job of profiling them so correctly and making everything suit their environment that they don't have to come back. So if you do your job correct at the beginning, you know they're not going to come back to you again and again. Been said that they do come, right? It's a technical product. So sometimes you need help here and there and so on. So it's there. 
but uh, then the second part comes into the picture. We all have skews, right? Like mm-hmm. we know that these are the top five questions that people usually ask, or these are the five things that we really need to know from the customer when they come to us. So, so everybody, whoever, even if there's a guy who's working on the ticket and he moves on, second guy comes in, he's got the context of what's going on. He can pick it right up there, right? He doesn't need to ask like, oh, which device you're using? Oh, what happened? No, like he can read, he know everything what he needs to know and just go from there. That is uh, why we are able to do this uh, so correctly. Uh, and, and actually it works because uh, we don't have to really have a really heavy support team as well. We have a lot of support guys and uh, everyone jumps in, right? Like we have got into our cell phone support call sometimes if needed be. Uh, but the thing is the whole thing idea is about like, we will never let customer wait. End mm-hmm. of the story. If you are busy, there is a big support group that there is almost 60, 70 people part of it. Somebody no. will pick it up. So there's a, ded- there, there's a dedicated team who will always do that. But, you know, there's always we have plan B and plan C. So mm-hmm. never let customer win is what we will always believe in. Yeah. And again, it's like what a, what a novel thing in 2022, making a product that works and is supported. <laughs> it's, it's like it's, that's a business model that's like challenging for a lot of organizations. It's weird. Um, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's great. And I get, you know, you're, it's funny, your engineers work a lot, like, um, a lot of the sales, uh, team here where it's really more about like sleuth work and, you know, you get an incoming, uh, an inbound opportunity for something. And it's like, what are they doing with it? Like, like specifically the reason why the podcast is called beyond the device is because we're always trying to get people to think beyond the device. Like you need a mobile device in the field. You get a thousand, Correct. you know, uh, I get an, I need a thousand iPads. You hear this stuff all the time or any thousand, you know, Samsung tablets. You're like, yeah, sure. Um, and then they just, you know, here's your quote. It's like, man, what are they doing with it? If they have a thousand Samsung tablets going out into the field, I'm positive. They're going to need wow. to connect to data. They're going to need to manage it, probably need to protect it in some capacity. Like it's just, it, it just, and I get it. Like, it's not, I think it's like uh, anything that, that's negl- negligent. It's just that people have a quota to retire in sales and they just want to get things out the door as fast as possible. But it's like, if you just take a minute uh, to think about what is best for the customer and the same way that your engineers are like, hey, before this goes down, you know, this goes downstream, why don't we figure out what your requirements are so that way we can set you up on a path of success. And then to your point, you don't have to have, you know, 15, 20 additional meetings. Obviously, things in software change. You're always going to have to be available. But, you know, it's the difference between supporting somebody long term a couple times where something might break or something might need to be updated versus you're being on the phone with them like every single day, which I hear yeah. nightmares about, nightmares about. So it's again, and this isn't this isn't like it shouldn't be rocket science that you make a product that works and that you support it without charging extra for it. But man, as we've gotten into the whatever business model we're in now in 2022, heading into 23, that definitely seems to be the uh, the business model. Uh, I also yeah. want to talk about some competitive advantage. I know you guys um, some competitive advantages. Excuse me, as I. Uh, stutter through my speech there. Uh, location services, uh, there's some stuff around that. I know uh, the OEMs as well, uh, 35 plus certified, talk about a couple of those logos. Um, and then uh, the kiosking. I think you guys have, that might actually be your unfair competitive advantage to the market. So I wanted to talk about that because I think you can do kiosking uh, probably better and more efficient than most, which is great. Um, and then we can talk about some vertical use cases Um as well, but maybe to start at the top, the location services. Do you want to hit one of those just each each at a time and go through them? Yeah, yeah why not, uh, Steve? You okay with me taking that, right? Go for it. <laughs> go, go for, for it. it. Okay, <laughs> okay. So uh, location services, right? Yes. Uh, now many people will say, "Hey, by the way, the other MDM also offers you uh, offers location services." Yes, they do. Uh, but how efficiently you have made it is where we make the difference, right? Like. For an example, uh, you can really see devices in real time and not only just showing them like, okay, this device was here that long. We go ahead and give you in detail a report about all your devices in a single pane of window. So mm-hmm. you can see multiple pin drops or the, the pins is nothing but representing a, uh, a device, right? Mm-hmm. And then if you can click on the device, then it will tell you all the details about like the lat and long and when it was last connected. And... Uh, Matter of fact, we can go ahead and tell you is like how it was moving from point A to point B. 
So, uh, so it, it's very big for logistic, right? Like, because we were talking about vertical as well. That's one of our biggest vertical as well. Mm. So that's why we have uh, done a little bit more than just giving the location services. So not only you know point A to point B, but we furthermore went into it because now we collected, we saw that there's so much of people using this location services in and out. That's one of the most used feature in Scale Fusion. Mm. And, and then we added pit stop to it. What does pit stop do, right? Like in logistics, it's very important for them to know, like, did the driver take the brake or not because of the ELD mandate and so on. The driver yeah, yeah, needs important. to follow rules and regulations. So uh, there is one thing that he says, it, did he do it or not? And, and at the same time, it's, it's good for them, right? And uh, it's, so we have done pit stops so that, you know, they get the report about like, okay, the device moved from one point to another point when it moved, uh, when it stopped. And now when it stops, like how do the battery get optimized, right? We have something like when the device is connected to a docking station, you know, then uh, it's it's performing at the optimal level, everything works. But when it's not, then how can you go ahead and optimize the battery? Because that is important for them as well. So when they take out the tablet and go outside, they want to make sure that, you know, the device still uh, runs on a good battery. Maybe they will go back and plug it in again, but just to make sure that it's running. The small, small features were very key for the logistic market. And this is where we get uh, complete uh, in detail to it, just not to have a checkbox, right? Do you have location? Yes, we do. No, we have locations, but we have done a better job in making it more uh, feature centric for them to go ahead and make most use of the location services. Now they're having the data, how well they can use the data is what we enable them with. So that's why we talk about that, right? And uh, mm -hmm. we do have, apart from location, we do have uh, another competitive advantage for Mac machines is like the remote control, right? Like, I guess there are very few, or I think we are the second or the third one who's giving that uh, feature out, wherein you can uh, take a remote control of a Mac device, right? Like to support the Mac devices, like uh, the IT guy can literally log in and take the control and so on. It was not possible in iOS world, like it's uh, screen sharing is the max that you can do. Yeah. And and this this other this is one of the major I would say like used feature, and that's why I'm raving about it. Uh, but apart from that, uh, it also is important for an MDM guy to go ahead and have been certified on multiple devices because the customers can move from one device to another whenever they want, right? And they want to make sure that they have the mixed inventory that scale fusion works on all of it. So uh, we have almost uh, 35, is that what, what was the last known? But I'm sure like in the last couple of months since we last spoke, I guess, we have onboarded a lot, many other OEMs as well to mm -hmm. get them certified. So whenever you want to have an out-of-box experience on any device, because nowadays we are hearing about zero touch, zero touch, it's nothing but like, you know, either you are integrated with Android Enterprise or are you a partner with any OEMs? So that's why it becomes a key for us to go ahead and have as many as OEMs as a partner. And that's what we have done. And apart from that also, like there are some key uh, manufacturers like Zebra or Samsung, Lenovo, Sony, Honeywell, Data Logic, you know, just to talk about the big brands. Mm -hmm. uh, they have done much tighter integration with the MDMs as well. So we can leverage their APIs and go ahead and give the better outcome to the end customer. Because if they're gonna buy these high-end devices, if that's a good investment, they wanna make sure that they get to use all the features that the device can possibly go ahead and offer as well. So uh, that is why the OEM aspect becomes uh, very important. And I guess uh, uh, the last point that you were asking me was about kiosk, right? Like what, yeah, what kiosk? The, yeah, the kiosk, I think you guys do this really well. Uh, I wanted to talk about the OEM piece just because it's like, there are so many, so many brands out there, and I think a lot of we work with a lot of them. I just want to make sure people, you, know, you threw out a couple of those names, which is great. I think okay. mostly uh, most people watching are going to be like, "Oh, those are all the companies we're working with as well." Uh, but I <laughs> wanted to talk about the uh, the kiosk mode because I think you guys have like a very simplistic way to do this. And again, it's like you look at um, what Scale Fusion can enable versus and the support, and then you look at the overall expense of it. It's kind of a head scratching thing. You're like, man, this is why aren't more people doing this considering how well it works and how it doesn't break the bank can, you know, comparatively to some of the other larger guys. So can you just talk us a little bit through uh, the kiosk mode you guys have, what makes it so great. And then uh, a lot of, a lot of people just think it's retail. Not so. I also want to talk about that. Yeah. 
Okay, so yeah, a kiosk, yeah, basically because we see a lot of kiosks in the retail, yeah. Uh, no, uh, uh, in a simple line, in a simple line, if I have to explain you what is a kiosk mode, right? So kiosk mode is wherein uh, you can lock down any Android, iOS, Windows device uh, into a mode wherein only few applications are running. So for an example, let's take an example of uh, healthcare. Right. If it's a patient monitoring system, now the, uh, if if it's in in the healthcare or it's in the hospitals, that tablet is dedicated to use only for few few apps on that device and nothing else. Right. You don't want possibly somebody misusing the data over there or patient related data. It can be scary, right? You don't want to have any hands on to it, like where yeah. the details goes here and there. So they want to go ahead and protect it in such a way that only two apps are running. So though it's an Android device, but only two apps are running and why we think that we have done this better than everyone else because when we started as a company we started as just android kiosk so we've been doing this from day one and uh, all the other things have started coming in uh, with time right like people ask for it customers ask and then we build and so on so android kiosk was the first thing that we built and that's our experience coming into uh, that sector as well right now just because we were doing android kiosk so early days we only had those customers now that's a good case study for us to understand what does a kiosk industry needs. And that's how we build the features around that. And there were a few things that we built, like uh, you know, a few apps that needs to be running in the background. Now they want to have a kiosk mode, but they want to have users to visit only a few websites, right? Only their work websites or only the websites that they need to access to. Now with the kiosk mode, if you give them the browser, now they can go ahead and open the whole Pandora box, right? They can go wherever they want to. But now what we did is like we created our own browser over there or give them an ability to manage Google Chrome. So you can possibly go ahead and have Google Chrome over there, but it will only work the way you want to. And to top it up, right? Now you have the, all the solution put out on the field, right? Everything is working, few apps, few websites, and the way you have designed it. You can put your company branding over there. That's one of the things that we do it so well, because now, even if you have the device, you can put the top bar color, you can change the wallpaper and so on. So the whole branding consistency is there throughout all your devices. So wherever they go, let's take an example of a hospital. If there are like hundreds of tablets everywhere, if the same branding is everywhere, now it, it gives the good image about uh, that organization. And at the same time, that brand awareness is happening everywhere, right? You see it and you know like, okay, this tablet belongs to this particular organization. And uh, that's the branding aspect becomes very important. Now, after this also, in kiosk mode, there is one where somebody is using it, right? In this case, what I was telling somebody using it. Now we have deployed a couple of uh, tablets or big TVs onto the airports where there's no one to touch. Now something goes wrong over there. How do you fix it? How Great do you, question. How do you, yeah, right? Like, so, and uh, how do you give support to those devices? If somebody calls in from the airport saying that, hey, this is not working. And so, so we have our own remote support app, right? So it, it not only cast, uh, it not only take control of the device, it can cast it on your screen. So you can go ahead and fix the device sitting wherever in the world, right? It works on internet, it works on cloud. So wherever you are in the world, you can take access of the tablet, see what's going on, because you are an IT admin, you possibly have access to more of the settings than anyone else does. Of course, so yeah. you can get out of the kiosk mode, fix whatever is going on, replace the device, or not even replace, like put it back into the kiosk mode and send it. And if something is going wrong, then they have a partner like you, right? Who can just go ahead and send them a replacement device. That is the thing. <laughs> here you go. And out of box, right? Like, hey, it's ready to go. Just have to ship it over there. And we can do overnight deliveries. <laughs> there you go. Can that you? is a thing. That is a thing. If it's broken, <laughs> broken, yes, we can. We absolutely can do that. <clears throat> yeah. So these are the few things that uh, I think like kiosk mode also we say like not, not a big differentiator for many people, they would say, but uh, we take pride in it because we understood that market very well because that's how we grew. And we catered to kiosk. We have a lot of customers who are just using kiosk mode. Yeah. So we know, we understand that world very well because there are so many problems and we have exactly made features based on those requirements. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, there you have it. Uh, uh, I just wanted to cover real quick before we're out of here, we move on to wrap up and closing comments. Verticals, logistics, retail, healthcare. 
Are we going to leave it there to focus three? Or do you guys want to, I mean, you, you technically can play. This is always the thing with MDM, especially an inexpensive MDM that's very well designed. You guys can kind of play everywhere, which is a bit of a gift and a curse because you can't boil the ocean. Um, but you, you, I just want to sure. make sure that we have an accurate representation of the of the verticals that we want to focus in uh, right now to make sure anyone who's listening who knows where to point you guys. <laughs> Correct. I think so, we uh, I think we touched yeah, on those. Uh, I mean, from my perspective, those are the key categories or verticals. But there's there's really two segments overall if you want to talk about where we play and and one is that managing your whole corporate inventory that could be everything from you know employee phones to their laptops to you know anything any connected device is almost one segment that you're trying to make sure those mobile devices are secure and and we look at that holistically and we help companies do that then okay. the the other side of it is the kiosk mode that we were just talking about which are very specific business applications Sometimes a person has that device. Sometimes a person isn't involved at all, but it's locking down a mobile device for a specific use case. Um, and that's where that kiosk mode comes in. And we really play in both of those lanes, although they're kind of completely separate across all kinds of verticals. So, okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys. That, that brings us to the end of this particular episode of Beyond the Device. Uh, wrap up and closing comments. Uh, Amit to you first, then Steven to you. Yeah. Uh, okay. So <laughs> I think it's time. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so closing comments would be is like, uh, you know, people can talk. Uh, people can go ahead and say that we are good at this, we are good at that, and, uh, and we can do so many different things in the market. Uh, what what we really want to say to whoever is listening out to us today is just evaluate us on the three things that we've been talking about, right? Ease of use, our support, and the price. And and the product just works, right? So uh, like whatever we have said so far, you can go ahead and sign up for a free trial and, and see it for yourself. Like, did these guys really say what they really are <laughs> hey they, they actually can do the thing they said they can do that's incredible yeah, exactly. again what a weird business model in 22 and <laughs> so yeah that, yeah that that would be my closing comment because uh i, I personally like i think like uh our product has been doing great like uh one thing that i think uh i i guess uh, maybe we should talk just like maybe 30 seconds on that but uh uh, how did we survive this big market, right? Within swimming against all these big boys and all, because we know these few things that we were doing and we were doing it correctly. And that's how we survive. And that's how we keep growing. And that's still the model. And this, and, and we are not hiding the secret sauce, right? We're going out and telling. Because by end of the day, I think whoever is using anyone's service, they deserve to get that support back. So mm -hmm. we all should do it. <laughs> And there's nothing secret about it. So you people are paying you for some services. Uh, you got to respect that, and you got to give them the support that they need. You would hope so. Uh, yeah. Thank you, sir. <laughs> uh, Steve, over to you, sir. Yeah, I'm at covered it really well, but I'm not sure if we touched on this. So I'll just I'll just say this: there's nothing too big or too small. So we have customers ranging mm -hmm. from. Uh, you know, five licenses for one account up to 500,000 on one account. So we can scale anywhere from, uh, you know, really small business to enterprise. So exactly what he said, give us a try, uh, get a demo lined up. We're happy to, you know, walk through all the features um, and, and then do a trial account for folks to, to give it a try and see if it works. That's awesome. Yes, we did not mention that earlier. So thank you for, yeah. for bringing that up. Thank five you, to 500,000 is a... Uh, quite the swing of uh, <laughs> size. So yeah, thank you for mentioning that. So, uh, and guys, thank you so much for watching or listening, depending on the medium that you chose. Uh, please leave us a comment in the comments section. Let us know what you thought, what your thoughts are, what you think of these types of episodes, what else you want to see. If you guys uh, want to have Steve and Amit back on, because they're coming back on anyway, we got another multi-vendor solution in front of you guys, but do leave us a comment in the comments section, click like and subscribe. It makes us very happy and be sure to check us out on the next episode of Beyond the Device. Uh, but in the meantime, also, I always, I forgot it. If you have, uh, if you want to just email us directly, you can do that at sales at the number three, E-Y-E-T-H-H.com. It's sales at three I tech.com. I almost got it out without stepping on myself, but not quite. <laughs> Thank you guys again for joining us. Thank you for listening. We'll see you on the internet. Cheers. Thank you. Take care guys. Thank you for listening.